Hi everyone, I'm Manuel Bivu, part of the Android Developer Relations team. When an activity or app is destroyed and recreated, you must restore the UI state quickly to provide a good user experience. In most of these cases, the user expects the UI state to remain the same. In this talk, we'll cover how your app can lose state and how to avoid it by providing best practices for saving UI state. We'll also see how some solutions work under the hood and how you can apply that knowledge to solve advanced use cases. And lastly, a recap to make sure you didn't miss anything. So, how can an app lose UI state? Firstly, through configuration changes. Some device configurations can change while the app is running as a device rotates, resizes, enters and leaves multi-window mode, or the user switches to light or dark mode. When the configuration changes, by default, the activity will be recreated and initialized with a new configuration. But even if you can avoid activity recreation in some cases in the manifest file, it is impossible to completely opt out of activity recreation. Some configuration changes will always recreate the activity. To learn more about this and why it happens, check out the Handling Configuration Changes documentation. By the way, the app you see on the screen that's the Now in Android app. It's open source and you can take a look at the code on GitHub. Another way to lose app state is when the system needs resources and your app is in the background. If the system is low on resources, it will do its best to keep your app process in memory. However, that's not guaranteed. The system may destroy it while the user is away interacting with other apps. And boom, it's gone. Lastly, the user or the system can destroy your application abruptly. The user can swipe your app off in the recent screen, can force create your app, the app might be updated in the background. So many different things can happen. For each of these scenarios, there are ways to save your state. Let's dive into them. As I mentioned earlier, it is impossible to completely opt out of activity recreation. So you need to ensure that your app can react appropriately to configuration changes. You cannot just lock your orientation to portrait and hope for the best. Okay, <laughs> better like that. To make data survive config changes, use the ViewModel API. ViewModel instances are cached in memory when the owner goes through a configuration change. This makes the ViewModel's data remain intact after the config change happens. B models are only limited by the available memory in the device, and reads and writes to in-memory state in view models are fast. In addition to this, the navigation library also caches B models when the destination is kept in the backstack, which is a nice touch given that the data will be instantly available when the user goes back to that destination. Because all of this, B models are the recommended solution for making UI state survive config changes. You can see an example of that in this code snippet. We have a view model as a state holder for a particular screen that exposes screen UI state to the UI. The screen UI state is built with information from other layers of the hierarchy and will still be there after a config change. Note that in the previous code snippet, we were using view models for two purposes. First, as a mechanism to make data survive config changes, and second, as a screen level state holder that exposes data to the UI. If you don't use ViewModels as a state holder, that's fine, but consider using ViewModel under the hood to make data survive config changes. The ViewModel API is the only supported way to make large and arbitrary objects survive configuration changes on Android in the scope of an activity, fragment, or a navigation destination. Before diving into the system needing resources, let's cover unexpected app dismissals first. It is a more common use case and it's gonna help us understand the other use case better. For data to survive unexpected app dismissals, we have to use a completely different approach. Instead of memory, we need to persist our information to disk. Persisting the data over the network in your own servers is also another option, but in this talk, we are just covering persisting locally on the device. For that, we have two APIs available in Jetpack, Data Store and Room. Data Store is ideal for small or simple datasets. And you should consider room if your data is well structured and has needs for partial updates, referential integrity, or is a large or complex dataset. Persistent storage also survives config changes and the system needing resources. It stores the information on disk, making the solution limited by disk space. 
and because it requires I.O. operations, it has slow reads and writes. You could usually store application data on disk. Due to how slow this solution is, it wouldn't make sense to generally store UI state. UI state is dynamic, it can change quite often. If you stored UI state directly on disk, your app could be slow to respond to changes in the UI. However, application data is totally dependent on the business requirements of your app. For some apps, some UI state might be considered application data. The last scenario we need to cover is when the system needs resources. In this case, the system might be in a critical situation and it might kill your process. Then it will recreate it at some point in the future when the user goes back to your app again. We don't have a problem with application data because it's persisted on disk. However, joy state is in memory and we are going to lose it all. Luckily, to not completely damage the user experience, Android provides a mechanism to save essential data so that the user can return to the state they were in before the process was recreated. This solution is the Save State APIs, which rely on Android bundle objects under the hood. There are APIs for Jetpack Compose, the View System, and Vmodels. We'll look at each of them later. The system persists Save State bundles through both configuration changes and when the system needs resources. The bundle is stored in memory. Android keeps a serialized copy of the data in memory outside of your process. The size of the bundle is limited, so use it to store a minimal amount of data necessary. Trying to store large objects could lead to runtime exceptions. We recommend that you don't store more than 50 kilobytes. Due to the need of serialization and deserialization, the read and write times could be slow. The time depends on the complexity of the types and the size of the bundle. The system might even try to optimize this and leave the same bundle object in memory without serialization for quicker access. But these behaviors might change across Android API versions. So please, don't store large objects or lists. Serialization could consume a lot of memory if the objects being serialized are complex, and this process happens on the main thread. Remember that the system might be in a critical situation. Usually, data stored in safe state is transient state that depends on user input or navigation. Examples of this can be the scroll position of a list, the ID of the item the user wants more detail about, the in-progress selection of user preferences, or input in text fields. There are different APIs for each UI toolkit. If you are using Compose, use the Remember Saveable API, and in the view system, the unsafe instance state callback. You could use these APIs when state is needed by UI logic, for example, when tracking whether or not a UI element is expanded. The Compose code we have on the screen is for a text message. Tapping on the text shows or hides more details. The show details variable uses Remember Saveable. This makes it survive configuration changes and when the system needs resources. In the view system, you could have a custom view like the following, with the same is expanded boolean. To save state, you would overwrite the unsafe instance state method, returning a bundle. To restore state, you get the bundle from the onRestore instance state method. Something to watch out for is that the view must have the isSafe enable property set to true, and it needs to have a unique ID. To create automated tests for these behaviors, you can use the state restoration tester in Compose and the activity scenario .recreate function in the view system. In the following code, we are testing the Compose code we showed earlier using the create compose rule function and different Compose texting APIs. See how we are creating a state restoration tester instance, passing in the Compose test rule, and how we use the emulate saved instance state restore function to test the remember saveable behavior. These APIs make sense when state is part of the UI logic because your state is present in the UI. However, when state is needed by business logic, your state will likely be present in screen level state holders. If you are using view models as a state holder to handle the business logic complexity of the UI, you have to use the save state handle API instead to contribute to save state. Here, we can see a view model that holds the message the user is currently typing in a conversation. It's using the saveable function, which is save state handles integration with compose state. Save state handle also provides integrations with other streams of data like state flow. 
But something to keep in mind when working with save state handle is that it only saves data written to it when the activity is stopped. If you update it when the app is in the background, the system will store the data the next time the activity is stopped. For more information about safe state handle, check out the documentation. As a summary, here is a table of the safe state APIs we recommend depending on the type of logic that you apply to the data. Remember saveable or unsafe instance state if you are using the state for just UI logic, or safe state handle if you need the data for business logic and you are using view models to handle the screen complexity. If you don't use view models for that, don't skip the next section of the talk. Cool, we are gonna move to more complicated use cases now and for that we need to do a deep dive and see what's happening under the hood. The first use case we are covering is how to contribute to safe state from your own classes. We've been presenting the view models as stakeholder implementation for screens in your app. However, due to their scope, view models are not a good solution for managing the complexity of reusable UI elements. Imagine that we have a reusable search UI element for news and we want to save the search user input into save state. Our stakeholder in Compose would look like this. We are passing the news repository and the initial search input as parameters. Then we have a mutable variable with Compose's text field value. As we saw earlier, the way to contribute this state to save state in Compose is with the Remember Seeable API. Following Compose API conventions, we can create a Remember function that uses Remember Seeable under the hood. It would look like something like this. Remember Seeable is going to take a variable number of inputs that indicate when a new state needs to be recreated with the new values. However, because new search state is a complicated object, we need to provide a custom saver. A saver describes how an object can be simplified and be converted to something that is savable, which makes it eligible to be stored in the save state. Back to our new search state, here is a saver implementation for the class. A saver needs to provide two functions, save and restore. Because our text field value state has its own saver already, we can simply delegate that functionality to it and save our current search input. Same thing with the restore lambda. We delegate that to the saver and call restore on it. With the result, we create a new instance of our new search state, passing in the restored search input and the news repository that we are passing to the saver function. In our remember new search state function, now we call the saver passing in the news repository. That wasn't too bad, was it? We are using remember seeable to do it. How can we do the same in the view system? Here we have our new search state holder again with the current query as a string. We cannot use save state handle because this class isn't extending view model. Also, we cannot use on save instance state because that's only available in a view class. To better understand the solution, we need to look at the different APIs that save state provides in the view system. The save state registry is an Android specific interface that allows components to save and restore their state using the save instance state mechanism. Then you also have providers that can contribute content to save state within a registry owner. So let's put this into practice. Back to our new search state, if we wanted to save current query into save state, we would need to make the class implement the save state provider interface. Then implement the save state method that is called before the registry owner is stopped. In there, we save our state into a bundle that we return. Now we have to connect this with a registry owner that we pass as a parameter in the constructor. At init time, we register the search state as a provider in the owner save state registry. And then we can restore the state if it was previously saved by calling the consume restore state for key method. And that's it. We can save and restore our mutable state from save state. If you are using the search UI element in a fragment, then you would initialize its state holder like this. And that would be it. That's how we can contribute to save state from our own classes in Compose and in the view system. Now we can move on to another advanced use case how to control the life cycle of remember saveable values. <laughs> yeah, you can control this. By default, a remember saveable value will be restored as long as the UI element was in the composition before the save event happened. If you remember the composable lifecycle diagram from our docs, 
a composable enters the composition, can recompose zero or more times, and finally leaves the composition. What we said means that when the UI enters the composition, the remembered saveable values are stored in safe state. Now, if a configuration change happens and the activity is recreated, the old composition is destroyed, a new composition is created, and remember saveable values are restored. Note that remember saveable values are restored, but values using the remember API won't. They are lost after the activity is recreated. And then lastly, when the composable finally leaves the composition, the values inside remember saveable are removed from safe state. Let's see how we can modify this default behavior. We've seen the view system APIs involved in safe state. If we draw a parallel line and talk about Compose APIs, we're going to find a lot of similarities. We have the saveable state registry interface that allows components to save and restore the state. One big difference here is that this interface is platform agnostic. It is not specific to Android. When Compose runs on an Android target, Savable state registry is connected with safe state registry via the disposable savable state registry implementation. Then we have savable state holders that can control how to contribute content to safe state with a savable state provider. In Compose, you can create instances of these APIs with a remember savable state holder function. And this is exactly what you need if you want to control the lifecycle of remember savable values in a particular part of the composition. Looking at the Remember Saveable implementation, it accesses the current Saveable State Registry and it gets initialized by calling Consume Restored from it. If there was no value previously stored, it gets initialized with the init lambda. So, if we define a new Saveable State Registry, we can control for how long Remember Saveable stores their values. And this is precisely what Navigation Compose does. Navigation, apart from caching view model instances when the destination is part of the backstack, it also keeps in memory the remember saveable values of those destinations as well. Let's see how we are doing it. On the screen, we have the nap host composable function which declares a new saveable state registry and state holder using the remember saveable state holder API. Here we have the API in action. Then, the content of a particular destination is placed inside a local owner's provider that is called on the current backstack entry. Local owner's provider sets some composition locals and calls a custom saveable state provider. This saveable state provider controls for how long the remember saveable values are going to be kept in the registry. In this case, if you look at the implementation details, it's going to keep them as long as the destination is in the backstack. Let's see an example of that. Here we are on the interest screen of the Now in Android app. The bottom bar navigation has three tabs that we have in the backstack. See how each destination has a different ID that is connected with the navigation's saveable state holder. On the interest screen, when we tap on an interest to see more details of it, a new screen opens and the new destination is added to the backstack. Now, if we go back to the previous screen, the destination will be removed from the backstack. When this happens, navigation calls the remove state function with the corresponding ID to remove all associated remember saveable state. Now, both the destination and the state saved in its saveable state holder are gone. They are no longer in memory. We've seen an example of how to control for how long remember saveable values remain in memory. If you happen to need the same behavior for your particular use case, remember saveable state holder is the API you need. Coming to an end, here are the different ways you can lose app state. Remember that your activity and process could recreate and there is nothing you can do to avoid it. We also looked at the different solutions we have to mitigate this and provide a good user experience. The view model survives configuration changes. Save state, config changes plus the system needing resources. And persistent storage, all of the above plus unexpected app dismissals. They are limited by the available memory, the bundle, and disk space. Use ViewModel to hold UI state that needs to survive config changes like screen UI state. Save state for transient UI state that depends on user input or navigation. And persistent storage for application data. 
At the top, we have the fastest solution for a type of data that changes more often and requires almost no delays to provide a good user experience. At the bottom, the slowest and most reliable solution to store application data that cannot be lost. Which one to use? You might need none of them or all of them. It depends on the necessities of your UI and the state that it contains. As many other architectural recommendations, treat these as guidelines and adapt them to your requirements as needed. Thank you everyone for watching and hope to see you in future architecture talks. Bye!